Hi everyone, um, so this is an update to the Get A Starting video um, just to show the latest uh, improvements to uh, room reconstruction um, available in Beta 4. Um, before we get into that, um, I just want to do a quick review of uh, some of the guidance for shooting panoramas for Meta Real Stage. Um, so you can use uh, either a 360 camera or a DSLR. If you're using a DSLR, it's very important to make sure that it's uh, on a panorama bracket um, and that the, uh, the lens is properly aligned with the nodal point um, of the uh, panorama bracket is properly aligned with the nodal point of the lens um, to make sure that the uh, panoramas are properly spherical even if your stitching software can stitch the panorama if it's not um, properly aligned uh, there'll be distortion and it'll be impossible to get a proper uh, 3D reconstruction. Um, now in terms of kind of shooting pattern uh, I think of this as a top-down plan of a location um, one thing that's important to do is, is to shoot panoramas either side of every uh, doorway or entrance. Um, this can help to make sure that when navigating that the user doesn't sort of randomly fly through a wall or get whacked by a, um, uh, a, a piece of wall when they're moving about. Um, it's not such a problem um, on desktop, but it's very disconcerting um, when you're using a, a VR headset. Um, the next thing to do will be to shoot probably a panorama in the center or as close as you can get to the center of each room. Um, and you can stop right there if, if, if you're short of time or um, you don't have a uh, long time for access to the, project, to the, to the site. Um, and that will give you, you know, you will be able to do a, a, a tour reconstruction with that. Um, but if you want to have better navigation within the rooms, it's also a good idea to shoot um, a few more points, um, generally sort of around any occluding objects in the room um, and, and sort of probably near the, the four corners of each, each kind of space. All right, so now we're going to pop into my account. I've got a new project which I just created here. I've already uploaded the images. So there's a bunch of images. It's a small condo. And I'm just going to select um, the five uh, panels that, uh, for the main kitchen salon space. And I'm going to hit New Room. Um, I use Control when I hit the New Room button to make sure I open a new tab, which means that my project uh, uh, dashboard is, is always still available there. So over here on the left here we can see uh, we've got the, all the thumbnails. They have a line through them which means they're not yet registered. Um, I can hide and reveal that. I've got my main tool panel here. Um, I'm just going to call this uh, Kitchen Salon. Um, here I've got some tools on top bar here for visual um, guides and also which change my views. So there's a plan view, a leveling view which is a panorama view with a locked um, uh, vertical and my panorama view where I'll do most of my work undo redo so um, stage uses a, a Google Drive a Google Doc style model where all of your actions are automatically saved as so you do them and you can undo and redo them and do stack goes on for f back, right back to the beginning of the work um, here we have a refresh button which uh, shouldn't be needed for now but uh, starts to be important when we're in the tour editor and then here we have the helper, which is contextual to whichever tool or object you've got selected. So right now we have panorama selected um, with the red border. Um, so we've got the file name, image size, and so on. I'm actually going to choose probably this image as my reference panorama, um, which is kind of going to give me reference panorama. It allows me to is the panorama that all the other panoramas in the room are going to kind of be located against. Um, I need to show the alignment tools. We're actually probably going to go to the plan view right now, and then bring this because right now my world grid is organized one way and I need to align my room with the grid so that I can use things like protractors and other alignment tools later on. I can hit G to show the grid or I can go and show it here. It's the same thing. Um, so that's that. If we go back to the panorama view, um, we're not sure if this is level yet. So I'm going to switch on auto leveling and you can see we did a little adjustment and we can see the level lines that the uh, system has found. If we go to the leveling view we can zoom around and just check that things are actually about level. We can check all the lines are lining up with the leveling grid so that's pretty good. So I don't need to see the alignment tools anymore. I'm going to go back to the plan view and start to draw my floor. Selecting the floor tool I've now got the draw um, helper and we'll start to draw some points. Oh, you'll notice I've I'm pressing one, so I've got one key and the two key. I have two protractors, 
Um, so I can go and select points um, and using the protractor it allows me to make sure that my new points are snapping exactly straight um, or at a specified angle come to there um, and now I'll switch the protractor off start building points out this way I think that one needs a bit more of a move um, another one probably over here I guess just going to make sure that's in the middle of the window I think we can pretty confident that the window panes are straight Somewhere over here, there's going to be another one. I can't see it, so I'm not going to worry about it too much right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to here, try and find my ideal point. I want that to be right on that corner there. Looks pretty good. Put my snap back on. I'm just going to come out to there temporarily. Now, what we can see is this point probably isn't quite right, so we're going to switch off the snaps and find the point and we'll we'll come back to look at that properly and from the panorama view in a minute now I'm going to go back over here switch on my two bring this guy over to here uh, maybe a little bit further that's it and then uh, back to one That's not the right place, so I'm going to delete this guy, put this So I think that's all I can do from there. Now I'm going to come around. Now one of the things interesting here is we have this kind of stepped ceiling, in fact. So it goes all the way around. And in fact, this is lowered ceiling. And then there's this higher bit here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this line for the ceiling edge rather than the, the second one. Um, because I've actually got more ceiling alignment points. It's going to line up more. And then we'll just, we'll just ignore the fact that this bit of ceiling is kind of raised up. I think that's what will make sense best for this particular tour. Um, could go either way, but I think in this case that makes more sense. Now, there's a bit of guesswork involved in where this corner is. I think we're going to put that there for now. We may have to change that later, but it's no problem. Um, and that goes back there. So we can see we're actually going deeper in behind those kitchen units than we are with this wall here. Um, so we'll just need to make sure that that actually fits with the, there's a bedroom over there behind the kitchen later, so we'll need to check that out. So that's a good start. Um, I could just put this, this is probably best part, as part of this space as well. Um, so I'm just going to put that back to there, try and line it up with the corner, and then putting twitching on both of the protractors, I can find that other hidden corner there. So that's good. Um, so now I want to put, I'm going to add one volume in. Um, Having a couple of simple 3D volumes in the space really helps with the alignment later on. So uh, when we're stitching the other panoramas, so I'm just going to um, put that there. Um, I don't think we got the other end right, but um, we can do a best take at it from here. Um, and then we can go back to the plan view. Now we've got a a basic layout. We can start stitching other panoramas into the room. So I'm going to to the floor there. So um, using the points that we know about, we're going to start stitching things down. And I can see this guy really well on this panel. So quickly stitch it in there. Now, if your room is level and you've drawn things to the right shape, you should almost always be able to stitch with just two points. Now these panoramas are quite level um, 
However, this one isn't perfect. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go to here and panorama view. I'm going to actually see what auto levering does. And it has moved it a bit. So it's probably worth actually popping back and making sure. I oh, see that didn't move it that one at all. But this one did adjust things a little. So let's come back and see if we've got a better fit now. It's made a whole lot of difference. I think that's about as close as we're going to get there. Um, we could maybe, so we can see we're already out a little bit on this side, we could maybe nudge this one a little bit that way. Um, here, we're, because the photo is right over in this corner, we're kind of coming up to the edge of the good definition um, of that panorama. So it's normal. There's a little bit of uh, seems to be a little bit of error. Let's have a look at this. Okay, so let's go up to the plan view. Snapping to here and to. Well, we can take a guess, a pretty good guess at that point, even if we can't see it exactly. We move that in. Um, and here we can start to look at what's happening with the top of this piece of furniture and seeing how well it's lined up. And that gives us a really good indication of what our fit's like. I think that's pretty good. Um, one look at the leveling it's very nice plan view snap tool and on we go and so in each case I'm really only using two snaps for the most part um, it does look like we're a bit off in this corner but everywhere else is fitting pretty well so I'll just come back and maybe nudge that bit of floor profile around after. Particularly the countertop is, 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 is working rather nicely. So um, I'll just quickly check the leveling. It's good. Snap. Okay, it's there. Um, yeah, it looks like we do need to add another point there, probably. Um, but as far as the rest of it goes, things are fitting quite nicely. So. Come back to that in a bit. Um, again, quickly just check that my panorama's level. Lots of nice verticals in this guy. It really works well. Plan view. Switch off the little tools. This one we're gonna actually need to use the other side. Oops. Hey, I got that really wrong, didn't I? Right. It's um, over here somewhere. Now, although I can't actually see that point, what I can see is the edge of this wall here. Um, and that gives me a good reference. In fact, we were pretty much in the good spot there. There we go. The countertop isn't too bad.
final one. I level it. Nice selection of level lines. Um, so can hide that to the plan view. Uh, snap. So that's pretty good for, for probably for those. If I go back to the panorama view now, we can see that we've got bubbles for each of our located panoramas. And if we click on them, oops, I'm not using the snap tool. If I click on them, I'm now able to move through my scaled three-dimensional space. And we can see our countertop is already starting to move um, how we'd like it to. So the whole process of getting our 3D space is already well advanced. So that's quite cool. The one thing I'd really like to do, I want to go to the plan view uh, and just make sure that my, uh, my floor plan, we've, got, we've missed a point here, so we're actually going to go back to the floor plan tool and we're just going to add a point here. Um, and from the panorama view, we just, ah, I think we're using snaps, switch off the snaps. Just move this so it's in the correct spot there, and the same deal for here. We just made that a bit more precise, and we should find that when we look through it from all the different things, um, we've got a good point. So that's pretty much it for now. I'm gonna in the next um, tutorial go into the process of adding volumes, um, but uh, I wanted just to give an overview of the registration registration process. As I say, it's useful to have one extra volume um, or one or two simple volumes that are relatively precise um, that you can add that, that help with the registration process. Um, all right, thanks very much.